Hello everybody, Ryan Cook here. Um, I am here to talk to you today about the numerous exciting curriculum and program developments uh, that we have planned for our 5th through 12th grade students for the 2021 academic school, uh, academic school year. Uh, just a little bit of background before we jump into the presentation. Um, and we developed a lot of these plans back in January and February time. Uh, the curriculum development team, uh, Yvonne Barheit, myself, um, and some other key players at school. A lot of the teachers really helped out with this. Um, and it's something that's kind of had to sit on the shelf for several months, obviously, with COVID uh, and all of the difficulties that that's uh, forced us to endure. And so we've had to leave it on the shelf uh, until we, we finish school back in May, June time. And it's been really exciting to start to work on these plans again and, and get them ready for the school year. So even with all of the, the difficulties, we're still going to move forward with, with all of these exciting plans. So this presentation is for all fifth through 12th grade parents and students. Um, it's not for lower school. There'll be uh, some different information coming out from uh, Yvonne Barheit for uh, any changes to lower school. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and jump in uh, and tell you all about the exciting things that we have planned for your children and our students. So just bear with me. All right. Okay, so like I said, the aim of the, pro of, the, uh, of the program today, the presentation today, is to talk to you about all of the changes that are coming and what that means. Uh, this presentation will cover a whole host of things, but primarily we're going to talk about the educational rationale for the curriculum changes that we've made, uh, sort of why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, we're going to explain the various pro new programs and opportunities that are available for our middle school and our upper school students. And there'll be a lot of uh, specific detail about each one of those for the different parts of the school. Uh, we'll show some sample schedules and then we'll also touch on uh, just a little bit on the blue model of delivery. And so the blue model, of course, which you will have seen in Dr. Bob's um, uh, weekly updates is if we needed to move to virtual learning. So we'll touch on that just so that people have a little bit of information. But the vast majority of this presentation is about the gold model. So all about all the things we're going to talk about today is all about if we are learning on site, which, of course, we have just announced that we will be doing. And we're very excited about that announcement. Um, so moving through this, we're going to do this in two parts. The first part will be middle school um, and then we'll move on to uh, upper school changes as well. So just bear with me while the presentation jumps around. So why make any changes? I guess that's the first thing that you may be thinking. Uh, and there's a whole host of reasons for that, of course. And uh, we just want to capture some of those those main reasons, uh, the main rationales for why we're doing what we're doing uh, as we look forward to 2021. So um, a change in landscape obviously involves, uh, um, you know, requires an evolving curriculum. And so as the world continues to change, what colleges are looking for, what employers are looking for, uh, COVID, global, global economics, we need to make sure that we're preparing our students as best we can. Uh, the changes that we're making in relation to program help us to go uh, further and deeper in relation to the four pillars, which obviously support and, and uphold our curriculum values. Um, the things that we're planning today are also going to provide greater flexibility and choice for our students. So that's something that, that can sometimes be difficult to do just by adding things, you know, adding a program for this or adding a program. We need a greater flexibility in terms of time, uh, how students can mix, obviously, uh, COVID aside. Uh, and so we want to make sure that our students have got space. We want to be intentional about the teaching of success skills. So things like collaboration, creativity, uh, critical thinking, data and information management. Those things are obviously delivered uh, through the regular teaching and learning through classes. Uh, but we also think it's important to be very intentional and specific about the teaching of those skills uh, rather than just hoping that our students will acquire those skills over the course of a, a very, very healthy CCS curriculum. Uh, we need to prioritize health and safety and the well-being of our students. And I think we've seen that more so recently in recent months than before uh, is that the mental well-being um, and, um, and, the, uh, and the wellness of our students is absolutely paramount. And so again, we want to be much more intentional about that as we look forward to 21, uh, 2021. Uh, we want to make sure that we are continuing to best prepare our students for uh, CCS internships, which they do in 11th and 12th grade, uh, life at college, and then obviously life beyond the school gates when they enter the labor market. Um, and because we want to continue to, uh, to innovate uh, as an innovative school, a project-based learning school, it's about pushing the envelope and making sure that we are uh, staying ahead of the game. I guess if you're not first, you're last. Uh, so let's talk specifically about the fifth grade, uh, fifth grade through eighth grade curriculum uh, that our middle school students will experience when they come back uh, in just a couple of weeks. 
So here's the main thrust of what we're going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to give you an update on the changes to the special areas rotor. Uh, that's those, uh, those pillars, those special areas like OEC, Spanish, and STEM, for example. We'll get into the detail in a second. Uh, I want to talk to you about the introduction of Wellness Wednesdays on campus uh, and also the introduction, introduction of our new character, citizenship, and skills program. Uh, and then once we've done that, I want to talk about a really exciting program which is the introduction of our middle school majors program. So we'll take each one of those in turn. Okay, so for fifth and sixth grade specifically, uh, our special areas you can see uh, has undergone quite a little bit of change since, um, since last year. And so we've changed some of the makeup of what goes into the middle school rotor. Um, the, the table that you can see or the list you can see at the top um, refers to what students will take uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday for an entire quarter. So they'll take these classes every day apart from Wednesday. We're gonna deal with Wednesdays completely separately in a moment. Uh, but these are the classes that they'll take uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for a quarter at a time. So you can see that they're gonna take uh, in a different order, uh, outdoor education, art, uh, STEM class, and Spanish. So they'll do each one of those four things every day bar Wednesday for a quarter. Uh, STEM has gone in there for all students this year. Fifth, uh, fifth grade and sixth grade. Really, really excited about that. And of course, those, um, those, those ever dependable subjects remain. So Spanish OEC and art remain in the quarter set up um, to make sure they get those things um, throughout the school year. Um, for the other areas, which you can see in the bottom box, we've made some changes to that. We try to make it a little bit more bespoke uh, and vary what's in there. So really exciting news is that uh, music is now gonna be focused on fifth grade and seventh grade. And uh, we're introducing craftsmanship for our sixth grade students and our eighth grade students, which we know that parents will be incredibly excited about. Um, so what you have here is what students will take once per week all year. So they'll do, they'll do music, fifth, 5A, for example, will do music every Monday. They'll have student support on a Tuesday, they'll have P on a Thursday, and they'll have a student support class, which will focus on uh, typing uh, word processing and those kind of skills which help to set them up for success um, on a Friday. Uh, so that's what the special areas looks like for fifth and sixth grade. Uh, moving on to Wellness Wednesdays, this is a completely new advent. So we talked at the start about the need to prioritize uh, student well-being, enhance student choice, find more flexible learning times, and to be really intentional about the teaching of skills. And this model uh, which, like I said, we developed back in February, delivers on all of those things. So we're incredibly excited about that. Uh, what you'll notice for fifth and sixth grade on Wellness Wednesdays is in period one and period two, they still get those core subjects. So rather than two hours of STEM and two hours of humanities, which they have on the regular school days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, they get an hour of those subjects instead. So that allows us to still get some core teaching on a Wednesday. So they have those core subjects every day of the week but to still free them up to do those things that we think are really, really important. Um, there's going to be a, a, a morning break in there for all of our students. Uh, that's an opportunity to use the snack cart uh, and just take a bit of a breather. Um, this, this presentation is not primarily concerned uh, with, um, with COVID protocols, but we will naturally touch on some of those things as we move through this. Uh, that will be in a separate document, which you'll be receiving probably around about the same time as this presentation. Um, and so just as a heads up there, the snack cart, there'll be several snack carts rather than one snack cart uh, so that students aren't all crowded around one thing. So again, prioritizing that social distancing to the best extent that we can. Uh, in period three, fifth and sixth grade are going to have a project slot and advisory. So a great opportunity here if some students need to work with different teachers, if we needed some students from uh, one half of uh, fifth grade to work with students from another half, it means they're not restricted to work in uh, purely in projects by their cohort or indeed by their grade level. So that gives us a really good opportunity. Uh, period three, of course, with all of the students having the same thing would be a great opportunity to get a guest speaker in, for example, uh, or do some kind of, um, you know, when, it was, when there's healthier times, some bigger or mass projects. Uh, period four is something that we're incredibly excited about and I have a few more details about that to follow. It's our new character citizenship and skills program. And then in the afternoon, uh, after lunch, they'll have their middle school majors, which again, I'll talk about in just a moment. For seventh grade um, and eighth grade, again, another update on the special areas, some changes to this. Uh, previously, seventh grade had STEM 
um, and eighth grade did not. Under this model, eighth grade and seventh grade uh, and fifth and sixth grade, of course, all have STEM in that rotor. And again, they keep OEC, uh, Spanish and art. So really, really uh, invest in time in all of those core, uh, sorry, key subjects um, all the way fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. And again, there's some more differentiation when you look at the second uh, table or collection of subjects towards the bottom. Uh, seventh and eighth grade, seventh grade will have music, uh, peace, student support, and junior achievement. Uh, junior achievement is an, uh, an entrepreneurial um, educational program, and I'm currently liaising with them uh, to, uh, to try and have some provision at Charleston Collegiate uh, for a, a business planning entrepreneurial type um, program uh, that will probably last about eight weeks uh, to go into, into their schedule. And that's got uh, to be confirmed on there because uh, they're still working out exactly what their provision is going to look like and how they're going to cater that. So that's in the works, and I'll, I'll give you a further update on that when we have it. For eighth grade, much like sixth grade, they have craftsmanship rather than music. So fifth and seventh have music. Sixth and eighth grade have craftsmanship. Um, and then, of course, uh, financial literacy um, is, a, is a, a differentiated option for eighth grade. So some good foundation building, fifth grade through eighth grade, with grade-specific provision as well. Uh, to vary it and to make it more engaging. So really exciting. Um, seventh and eighth grade as well, Wellness Wednesdays, looks very, very similar to the fifth and sixth grade model. They still get in an hour of humanities or STEM in the morning to continue to build those core subjects. But then again, project time, citizenship, character and skills, and then majors in the afternoon. So what do we mean by this new uh, CCS program, this new uh, creativity, sorry, this new character, citizenship and skills program. Well, as we know, the academic year is split into four different quarters. And so the idea with this is that they will have four different elements or components and, uh, and they'll take something different in each quarter. So here is um, a mock up of what that would look like. Um, and um, students in fifth, sixth, seventh grade and eighth grade will all have this program. Uh, which is incredibly exciting. So uh, let's take one group of, of, of seventh grade as an example. So seventh grade um, group A will have, uh, in quarter one, they might have um, eight weeks of teaching um, for the success skill, creativity and innovation. Uh, in quarter two, they'll have eight weeks of character ed, which focuses on social and emotional learning. Uh, when they move into quarter three, they'll get a second success skill. For example, in this model, it would be information management or data management. So teaching them how to manage information, how to manage data. And then in quarter four, uh, something which we really wanted to add more, uh, more weight to after uh, doing some good work on this last year is they'll have a quarter of RISE classes. And RISE is the CCS acronym for Respect, Inclusion, Support, and Educate. So they are effectively... Uh, equality, diversity, tolerance, global mindedness, global mindset, thinking classes. And so that will expose our students to uh, global and current affairs, um, equality uh, issues, things that are in the press and allow them to explore them and make their, their own mind up about those issues, which is obviously uh, so, so important to our, our students and, and producing well-rounded and uh, open-minded people. Um, so it won't necessarily be in this order, uh, but during the year, um, our students fifth through eighth grade will get a quarter of each of these things. So it's possible, for example, that one group will start with the RISE class and then have a success skill, then eight weeks of character ed, but they'll all receive those things as they move through fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. Um, for the continuing developing, uh, development of uh, our student skills, this is a really, really awesome program because if they're in fifth grade, for example, and they do, uh, they have eight weeks of skills teaching on creativity and innovation, and another eight weeks of information management, and then perhaps into sixth grade, they do eight weeks of cre uh, critical thinking skills and eight weeks of collaboration. By the time they get to high school, they're really bolstering those skills, um, and like we said before, ready for college and, and ready for the world of work, which is our our responsibility to prepare them for that. The pre majors program. Um, is those two hours in the afternoon. And if I just jump back a couple of slides to perhaps this one, you can see there in, in period five and period six, the students have uh, middle school majors one and middle school majors two. Um, this program could be called choices or passions because the, the whole idea with this is that it's preparation for the upper school 
internship program, which is called Majors, our Majors program at CCS. And the whole idea here is that students are invited to explore their passions and discover, discover new ones that they never even knew that they had. Um, and so students will fill out a Google form uh, and we'll encourage uh, our parents to help our students, certainly in middle school, complete their Google form. Um, and they'll have a choice of a number of different options. And so we've got some examples down here. Um, some of these examples are real examples and some of them are indicative examples. Um, and so, for example, they might take, um, the, well, they'll take two hours of majors. And so that's probably one hour of one of these activities at two, at one till two, and then another hour of these activities from two till three. And there's some really, really cool stuff that the staff are gonna be offering. And just to run through a few of them, creative writing, um, introduction to cooking, the history of science fiction, music appreciation and music composition, uh, special effects makeup, unbelievable, uh, jewelry design and marketing your products, and then theater and acting. And like I said, that's not an exhaustive list, it's just an indicative list. Uh, what you'll see in brackets next to it is the, um, is the, the vocational expertise or the, uh, the career cluster uh, that the, uh, this um, particular activity falls within. And so for creative writing, of course, that would be great preparation for people that are interested in journalism or marketing. Uh, the introduction to cooking, obviously uh, catering, hospitality and the leisure industry, which is so big in Charleston. Uh, and so by putting those things in parentheses next to each of what, each of those, you just get a bit of an idea about where this is going. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's something that the, the students get to choose, but it's also something which is going to open their mind and expose them to various different types of career. And we just think that that's an absolutely incredible program. Um, and this is really going to set our students up for moving into high school. And again, if I use the example of a student in middle school, let's take a sixth grade student uh, and they might do a couple of different or several different um, majors that they're passionate about in middle school. And so they're really gonna start to discover the things that they love and the things that they dislike. Um, and what that's gonna do when they get into high school, it's gonna inform their, um, their course choices, their course options. Um, and research also supports, that, uh, also supports that students that are engaged in activities like this are much more likely uh, to pick a major that they enjoy the first time around, they're less likely to switch majors uh, when they get into college, which is obviously better in terms of time and, of course, more affordable. So we think this is going to be a great advent for our middle school students. OK, on to the upper school. So now we're going to focus more on ninth through 12th grade. Um, OK, we're going to talk through the introduction of Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, so a similar concept to what you've just seen for fifth through eighth grade, but very, very different curriculum content. Uh, the introduction of the character citizenship and skills program that runs all the way from fifth grade through um, 11th grade. Um, but it does look very, very different, as you'd imagine. It's grade specific. And that gives us the opportunity to tailor programs to those specific needs, interests um, and requirements of our students. Uh, we're introducing a program which is similar to middle school majors uh, for our ninth and 10th grade students. And this is going to be called the pre-majors program. Um, and we're also making some changes and updates to the junior majors and senior majors uh, program. And remember, when they get into their senior, uh, the junior and senior year, our students venture out of school and they go to an internship. They go to the workplace. And we've made some great uh, changes to that, which uh, Miss Sal has already made a video and sent that out to 11th and 12th grade students and parents. So she's ahead of the game on that, as always. Um, and then item number five, we're going to talk about the additional program choices uh, that we have for upperclassmen as we look to further differentiate our curriculum and cater for our students' needs. So here is a, a screenshot of what Upper School Wellness Wednesdays look, looks like. Bit more of a complex model, but still very, very easy to absorb. Um, it's going to kind of take you through that. So as you can see, um, no teaching of English and math. Um, in period one and two, like the middle school students have got. So having developed a much better foundation in their middle school and early high school years, now when you get into high school, there's an opportunity for us to branch out a little bit more and put in a different set of requirements for them. So many of you will be aware that we have a jobs program at Charleston Collegiate. And so that's going to stay. It's such a great program, again, in terms of employability, uh, development of skills, uh, work readiness, building your resume. And so we've made some exciting changes for that uh, to that, which uh, Miss Sowers will be updating the students on uh, when they come back for orientation on site. 
Uh, so all of our students, ninth through 11th grade, uh, will be doing jobs period one, 8.05 until nine o'clock every Wednesday morning. Um, when you get into period two, um, very, very similar to what the middle school students are doing in period three and period four, we've got our CCS program, Citizenship, Character and Skills. Uh, and that's very, very similar to what we talked about before, although the content of those four elements will obviously be a bit more grade specific. Um, we have advisory planned on a Wednesday, uh, similar to um, the middle school students. They, they had a project slash advisory slot. And then for uh, ninth and 10th grade, uh, we have uh, Project Time or Weebly. Weebly is our digital portfolio. So all of our students in high school uh, create and then maintain a digital portfolio. It's a really, really cool program. It's something they can take along to a job interview. They can uh, take along to a college interview and show, demonstrate their learning, show how they've maintained uh, their uh, the digital portfolio. And of course, it enhances their, their IT skills and gets them an IT credit while they're at Charleston Collegiate. Um, things start to look a little bit different. You'll see in period four for the 11th grade students. That's because we have an ACT and SAT prep class. By the time they get to 11th grade, we're, we're confident uh, that they can maintain their, uh, their electronic uh, portfolio themselves without having some class time for it. Uh, you kind of, when you get to that stage, we're now trying to ready them for being a bit more autonomous and being ready to, to leave us and fly the nest in just a year or 18 months time. And so they'll have ACT and SAT prep, which of course still remains a, a key feature of college entry uh, for uh, our students in 11th grade. Um, going back to ninth and 10th grade, you'll see in period five and period six, they'll now do pre-majors, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but at this point, I really wanna talk about changes to the majors program for the juniors and the seniors. So previously, the juniors would go out two afternoons a week. This model has them going out one afternoon a week which gives us more time with them in school. It basically gives us the time to do the ACT prep class, their advisory slot, their uh, CCS program and their jobs. Um, so that's really good because like I said, we wanna make sure that we're giving them time to develop those skills and take those classes. So they'll go out in the afternoon. Um, one of the other great things about them going out one afternoon a week instead of two is it means that they only need transport one time a week. So that makes it more accessible for our students, certainly those students that might have transport difficulties or don't have their own vehicle, which obviously not everybody is in a position to be able to afford their own car when they're 16 or 17 years old. Um, the same rationale is applied to the 12th grade students. So they will go out for one full day instead of five afternoons. Um, it largely equates to about the same amount of time in, in the workplace. Previously, the students would, might go out at 12 or one o'clock and they might do one till three for four or five times a week. Uh, this has our students going out all day. So our 12th grade students, our seniors, they don't even come on site um, on a Wednesday. They're in school Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, so some real benefits to this is the first one is that transport item. Now they just need transport uh, once a day on a Wednesday, not every afternoon, five days, which can be a struggle for some of our students and some of our families. The other thing which we love about this model is on a Wednesday morning, they get up and they get dressed and they go to work. Uh, and so again, as we look to enhance uh, their employability skills and ready them for the workplace, uh, it means that they do a full day at work. The other benefit with having them out one full day instead of all five afternoons during the working week is that we now have them in school for, for four afternoons a week. Uh, and so that means that we can offer them more courses, offer them some more opportunities. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So that's a, uh, as you can see, a really highly differentiated program, very grade specific for our 9, 10, 11, and 12th grade students. And we are really, really excited about this. Um, as I mentioned previously, uh, Ms. Sowers has sent a video um, to the 11th grade and 12th grade students and parents to explain this uh, and to ready them for that program. So similar to the uh, CCS program that we mentioned for all fifth through eighth grade students, um, we're going to make sure that our ninth grade, 10th grade, uh, and 11th grade students, again, get deliberate teaching of skills on this, on this model. We have the same ones mentioned before. It's likely to be different, uh, for our upper school students. Uh, but in the first year, it might, might be the same skill. Uh, that might be a good grounding activity from an educational perspective. Um, you can also see that the, um, character ed looks different for ninth and 10th grade. They're still going to focus on, uh, social and emotional learning in ninth and 10th, but when they get into 11th grade, 
that character ed class will be used to focus um, on college prep. So they'll be working on their college application essay. Uh, they'll be working on their common app. They'll be working on how to narrow down uh, their choices. Uh, they'll be looking at career clusters uh, and all of those things that, you know, are very, very important uh, features of making that decision. And then, of course, everybody in high school, um, aside from 12th grade, because they'll be out, uh, just like everybody in middle school uh, will receive and participate in a, a RISE education, which is, again, that teaching of uh, equality, diversity and exploring um, all of those global issues that are so important to us all. So pre-majors, uh, much the same as uh, middle school majors. Uh, so the majors program really in 11th and 12th grade is one of the flagship programs at Charleston Collegiate. And so we're so pleased to be extending that down the school. When we first started thinking about this, we thought about extending it into 9th and 10th. Um, and, um, and then we just you know, got incredibly ambitious and said, well, well let's try and extend it all the way down into, uh, into middle school and give our fifth grade students the chance. So um, again, it's preparation for upper school uh, internship programs, uh, again, as they seek to discover what they like, what they dislike, and help them to make more informed choices when they get into 11th and 12th grade and then they move on to college. Um, some of the examples here are uh, similar or the same as the previous one, but some of them are different. So, example, TED Talks um, in science is obviously a STEM activity. Um, international documentaries could be one where the students look at uh, culture and relations, culture and international relations. Uh, physical training for varsity sports could be offered on a Wednesday afternoon in the one till two or the two till three slot. Um, and so you get the uh, you kind of get the idea with that. When we first came up with the idea of um, middle school majors and pre uh, sorry, middle school majors and pre majors. So the two programs that run fifth grade to eighth grade and this one, which runs ninth grade to 10th grade um, again, back in January, February time, the idea was that we could really mix students. So if a fifth grader wanted to do the TED Talks in Science, uh, along with some ninth and 10th graders, they could. Uh, so that was really our hope was to be able to provide a much broader offer uh, and students could mix. Some of these classes obviously would need to have uh, limits on them. Uh, for example, if you were doing something like cooking, you might only want a maximum of 10 students for obvious health and safety reasons. Um, so COVID is going to change that slightly because as you're probably aware, our building will be zoned. And so uh, we, might have, uh, we ha might have to do a slightly smaller offering as we look to cater the middle school majors just for fifth through eighth grade, and then the ninth and 10th grade pre-majors, as obviously we don't wanna be mixing those students. But certainly uh, when things start to return to normal, we can broaden that, up, broaden that offer uh, much more and allow our students to, uh, to pick from a broader list. So we'll have to focus that a little bit more but that's absolutely a reason for us. Um, you know, that's not a reason for us not to do it. Uh, the final change for um, the ninth through 12th grade students, in addition to the things that we've already mentioned, uh, some additional upperclassmen opportunities. And we'll be speaking with the students uh, when they return on campus. Uh, and so one of these is uh, for our, uh, our 11th grade students. They're going to have a choice of science this year, which we're really excited about. Usually, uh, Charleston Collegiate students take physics in 11th grade uh, to build on the work that they've already done in chemistry and biology in 10th grade and 9th grade. Um, but this year they're going to have the option of environmental science or physics. So that's another choice for them um, to kind of hone their skills and start to, you know, find their own path as they start to think about college. So picking a science that's going to benefit them and the career that they think they might like to go into or the college degree study they might like to go into is a great opportunity. The other thing this year is that environmental science and physics, um, both of those classes, um, the students will have the chance to be prepared for the AP exam. Uh, we are not an AP school and we do not offer AP exams on site. Um, it does not jive well, as you would expect, with project based learning. One of those approaches is very uh, is, is about memorization and rote learning. And the other one is about engagement and dynamism and, and, and finding your own kind of way through the material. Uh, but what we can do with these two courses um, is we can provide a curriculum to the students of the uh, topic areas that will be naturally occurring in the PBL delivery that we are doing on site at Charleston Collegiate. And then we'll provide the students with a list of topics, uh, which will be, you know, a reasonably be smaller than the topics that we are covering. But we'll pro provide the students with a list of, stu of topics that are not covered naturally in the Charleston Collegiate uh, program. 
uh, and the students can work on those outside. And between those two things, uh, they would be uh, ready and prepared to take the AP exam um, as a private candidate off-site. So that would just be a case of registering for the exam. Of course, we can help to direct the students to that. But that's a great opportunity for the students. So those students that really are passionate about having a go at that uh, will have the opportunity. They'll obviously have to show some dedication in their own time uh, to work through some additional topics. Uh, but that's great for encouraging their motivation uh, and their own self-discipline again as they are now um, you know, juniors and thinking about getting them ready for leaving school. Um, there'll be some option for science choice in 12th grade. Our 12th grade uh, 12th grade students take um, a really cool forensics program in 12th grade um, but there may be some opportunity for um, if there's a couple of students from 12th grade that would love to take the environmental science class um, we might be able to move a couple of the students into there especially if they want to have a go at that AP uh, style option so uh, we'll work with our students on that so that's another opportunity for um, for our, our students uh, it's unlikely that those students would pick uh, physics because they already They've already taken it in 11th grade, so they took that class as juniors. Um, juniors will now be on site for uh, four afternoons a week uh, rather than for uh, three afternoons a week. Uh, and that allows us time, which we mentioned before, to be able to do those classes for their digital portfolio uh, and for the ACT, SAT prep class. So they were things that uh, they didn't have time on their schedule for previously, um, in addition to the, um, the new CCS class they'll have time for that in their schedule as well uh, seniors are now on site four afternoons a week uh, which allows for more math sections so we're able to differentiate their math classes uh, to a greater ability um, and it allows us to add some additional classes one of which this year is theater uh, which some of the uh, seniors approached me uh, at the time juniors approached me um, about adding something like that and so you know that student feedback was important to us um, and we're really excited to be adding uh, a theatre class and of course that sits under our arts pillar um, and a class that they probably haven't had the chance to take um, at all or certainly for a while so that's that's great opportunity for them um, and one of the other opportunities of course is a, is a more focused majors experience for our students uh, primarily our juniors and our seniors which we touched on before so our seniors will do a full day at work uh, rather than just those afternoons okay that is the end of the curriculum updates for uh, middle school and for upper school so these are the we've covered the new programs that will be introduced this year uh, so now i'm going to touch very very quickly uh, or briefly i should say on the blue model and so the blue model is of course the model that we would move to um, if the school needed to move to virtual learning so if the campus was closed um, and we were not able to have on-site learning the on-site learning is the gold model, of course, then we would move to the blue model. And so I just want to share just a couple of um, structures, teaching and learning structures, so that you can get a little bit of a feel about what the blue model is. So back in March through June, we, of course, um, had to do virtual learning because of the, uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, and as you guys will probably remember, uh, we went through uh, two or three incarnations of that program so in the end i think we were we were on online learning version 3.0 um, and that was just as it progressed and we added things and we adapted it to improve it so i guess the blue model is effectively virtual learning 4.0 so it has further additions further improvements uh, to make sure that it's much richer for our students so one of the governing um, principles i think of the blue model and virtual learning this time around is that it will more closely model the regular school day when we moved to that uh, virtual model back in March through June, I think we were all uh, dealing with um, a state of flux. Um, parents um, had changes to their employment. Some parents will have been uh, furloughed, of course. And so life at home looked very, very different. Uh, and we were kind of adapting and adjusting as we went along. I think that now things have started to settle down. Um, we can replicate the school day uh, a little bit more if we need to move to the blue virtual model. So that's one of the guiding philosophies, which is item number seven right there at the bottom, um, should perhaps be item number one, more closely modeling the regular school day. Uh, so um, previously our students would have um, an hour a week of live learning time, and then the, the rest of their learning time would be asynchronous. And again, that asynchronous decision was made because we were getting feedback that families uh, were in a state of flux, needing to adjust their schedule, 
Um, they might be working from home. They might be furloughed. We have a, a confidence that the bulk of that has now settled down. So that means that we can offer more live learning time to our students in a synchronous manner. Um, we'll still record those lessons because we'll be aware that some students might need to consume that asynchronously and uh, consume that after school hours. But uh, this time around, if we have to move to this model and we genuinely hope that we, we don't have to do that, there'll be three 40 minute live meetings per week instead of one one hour uh, meeting per week for their core subject. So that obviously means much more regular contact um, and three uh, slightly shorter sessions instead of one uh, longer session. So they'll get much more learning time with their teacher in a virtual classroom. Uh, there'll be regular student breaks. So we, we, we settled on 40 minutes so that the students would have um, 20 minutes before their next lesson. We don't want students to be at their desk um, completely um, and, and solidly hour after hour after hour. They need to get up, they need to move. Um, and so that also gives them um, you know, time for a rest break, time to compose themselves, to check, okay, what, what did we study last time in the lesson I'm about to enter? Let me just prepare, let me steady myself, let me be prepared to start that lesson. So it gives them some more regular screen breaks between their classes, which we think is important for health, safety, and well-being. Um, there'll be virtual project time for students to collaborate. So that might be a virtual classroom uh, with the teacher, it could also be without the teacher. And so assigning collaborative tasks, uh, which we did back in March through June, um, but you know, it was much more traditional instruction back then as we were obviously adapted into that, to that program. So we're really gonna um, ensure that students get some more of that virtual time. Again, they can use Google, uh, Google Meets, uh, Google Docs. So there's, there's huge opportunities for them to be able to collaborate before arriving at a live lesson. There'll be smaller, daily assignments rather than larger assignments. So that doesn't mean that we'll do away with projects. We'll still absolutely be prioritizing projects, but sometimes I think for students, it's easier to deal with uh, little and often uh, in relation to, um, to daily, uh, daily assignments, uh, smaller daily assignments. And again, the research uh, that we've been doing also you know, supports that in terms of good learning. Uh, and good, good curriculum delivery. Um, we'll still keep Wellness Wednesdays under the blue model. It will need to be adapted uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and one of the things which was very successful last time was the flex time that students had on a Wednesday afternoon. And so students had time to do community service, just get on top of their homework, take a bit of a break, read their favorite book, work on ACT prep. And it just gave them one afternoon a week to be able just to get on top of the things that they wanted to do. And we know that was great for the mental health of our students. It also provided a key opportunity for um, team meetings. So staff, uh, even though the students were off on Wednesday afternoons, the staff were still working. Um, and you know, as you can imagine, team meetings take longer when you're doing them virtually. Uh, there's more student issues, progress items to discuss. And so that would give us an opportunity to have a, a one or two hour team meeting. Um, under the blue model, the middle school majors and the pre-majors for ninth and 10th grade would disappear. They wouldn't be able to be delivered virtually um, or they wouldn't be able to be delivered virtually easily and we would lose the flex time for the students. So that would be an adaptation which we would change just to ensure that the students had a little bit of a break from school. When we reconvened on site, we would gear back up with the middle school majors and the pre-majors for ninth and 10th. Um, ACT and SAT prep class would still be available. Uh, one benefit of moving to the blue model, of course, would be um, at the moment, we would have ACT and SAT prep on site for 11th grade students because the 9th and 10th grade students and the 8th grade students are doing something else. They're in other classes at that time. If it's virtual, there's nothing to stop our 8th grade students, 9th grade students and 10th grade students joining those ACT, SAT, math and English prep classes. So that would be an opportunity that we could steal back. So there's just a little bit about what the structure of that model would look like. Obviously, this doesn't deal with the minutiae of, you know, my son or daughter will have math on a Monday at nine till 10 or 930. That detail would obviously be would obviously follow um, if and when we move to a blue model. Uh, but certainly whilst I, I have your attention and hopefully I still have it, uh, I haven't bored you too much. Uh, I, I did want to share some information about what that blue model would look like just so that you can be prepared. Um, as to what to expect. All right. Um, finally, um, if you do have any questions about anything that you've heard today, uh, here's some kind of key contact information. So obviously, 
Uh, you can t contact Yvonne, uh, Miss Barheight for our students. Um, if there's any issues or questions in relation to, to pre-K through fifth, uh, you can contact me for any uh, issues in relation to seventh through 12th grade, uh, which many of you have been doing anyway over the summer. It's been wonderful. Uh, Miss Sowers, our Dean of Upper School Student Life and our Head of Equality and Diversity. So if you've got anything about student life uh, or anything about the RISE program, uh, she would be the, uh, the professional that could help you with that. And of course, Miss Boyd as well, who's our academic dean, uh, effectively our curriculum expert, curriculum coach um, for pre-K through 12th grade. So if you've got any questions uh, about teaching and learning, uh, then, then Liz Boyd could help you. Your first point of contact for any teaching and learning questions, of course, would be uh, Yvonne and myself, Miss Barhight and myself. Um, so if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I know that that presentation has probably taken up just a little bit of your time. Ordinarily, we would be doing this as one of the uh, monthly uh, parent meetings that uh, Miss Barhight and I uh, host uh, monthly. Uh, and so we didn't want to wait until August. We also are cautious about, or conscious, I should say, about, about bringing a, a volume of people, a volume of parents on site and making the mix in the Grimble. Um, and so although it's taken some time, I hope that you have found that to be uh, a valuable use of your time uh, and interesting. Um, we are genuinely, genuinely excited um, about the, uh, the changes, the additions that we're making. Um, I, believe, I believe in my heart of hearts that this is absolutely in the interest of our students. I think they're going to absolutely love doing these new things. I think it's going to stretch them. Um, I think it's going to reach into their skill set um, and it's going to really, really challenge them. And of course, that's what we want for our students. And they're going to get a load of choice under this model. Uh, so really excited. I think we're doing some groundbreaking stuff. Um, thank you to the teachers uh, and the administrators that have helped us to, uh, to put this awesome model together for our students. Uh, and uh, we can't wait to have you back on site. Thanks for your time.